G'day, I'm Peter Hardy Atkins and as I promised I would talk about intelligent orientation control after I'd consolidated on hoverhold, here I am to talk about intelligent orientation control. I have to say that if I thought the manual was bad when it came to binding and hoverhold, I think it is downright shocking when it comes to intelligent orientation control. So there is quite a lot that I can help you with if you've been thinking that this is all too difficult. Okay, here is our walk here in front of a curious orange spot. That spot represents us and the point where we plugged in the battery. The Walkira now thinks that it's heading in the direction we're intending it to fly. It is an X copter and then we flick that switch and it's a plus copter. Now that could seem a little bit scary, but once you get out in the field, I think you're going to find there's a lot to be said in favor of it. Let me show you exactly what we're going to do on the first attempts. Okay, we're on the launch pad. It's absolutely horizontal. We've done all the calibration checks and the trims are neutral and the switches are off. Lift into the air two meters and move forward to about five meters out from ourselves where we're going to do a hover hold check. The hover hold check was okay. We know the GPS is working with us. So onwards we go. We're going 10 meters from ourselves and then we're doing a slow pirouette. At the end of the pirouette, when the aircraft is square to us, we're going to flick the IOC switch. And then with a tiny amount of left cyclic roll, we're creeping across the sky leftwards, nursing the throttle to maintain altitude. There is a little bit of a tendency to wander in these movements. You're only two meters above the ground, play it safe. More power is better than less. Sliding right now with a tiny bit of right cyclic and keep working on that throttle. Now this does take some practice. You're going to have to do this several times before you'll achieve much confidence. Back we go the other way now. Left cyclic, bringing us back to the middle of the field and we'll flick the IOC switch off. So now we've got that sorted, let's go out in the field and see what happened on the first couple of occasions when I started to play with intelligent orientation control. Now to start with, I decided I was only going to practice the cyclic right and left. Switch on, right aileron, a little more throttle, left aileron, too much throttle, right aileron, no it's going to bring it over the top of me, okay, switch off, it's gone across and I'm flying aileron, with more throttle, and I'm flying opposite aileron, with more throttle and I'm applying opposite aileron with more throttle. Oh yes, I've got the idea of this. Too much throttle. The intelligent orientation control switch is here. It is the most easy switch for a right-handed person to operate. Right on the corner, thumb on the stick, whack. You've got it. It's great. My suggestion with this switch is, this is the switch you hit. It's off, it's on. It's off, it's on. Whack, whack. IOC on and slightly backward stick. And it's wandering off left of the point. IOC off. When the aircraft was calibrated, it was facing in that direction. So now I'm going to go to... Uh, to bring the arms of the computer lock on, ah uh, yes, and off, yes, okay, so if the aircraft is precisely lined, it's takeoff line, 
with the calibration point, if it's actually on that line, and you apply the IOC now and bring it back, taking it off again, it wasn't precisely aligned. But anyway, we've got the message. What the manual totally fails to explain is the special significance with IOC of the start-up battery connected position at the start of the flight. Because that is the moment when the flight controller fixes in its own mind its orientation. While the aircraft remains forward of that position, the controls work exactly as described in the manual. Whenever you connect the battery to your Walkura QRX 350, it notes two important details, the latitude and longitude of its current position and its alignment angle from that position. Now it's that second point, it's the alignment point which is important in IOC because it is its memory of that alignment that helps tell it whether the left hand side of the aircraft or the right hand side of the aircraft is closest to base. At the moment when the pilot hits the IOC switch, the aircraft freezes its yaw control and measures that heading. In this case, the heading that it's adopted is 315 degrees. As soon as the pilot applies a backstick command, the computer knows that it has to go to a heading which is 135 degrees less than the reading. So it took 315 degrees as it's locked off your heading. It now subtracts 135 and the new course which it will apply is 180 degrees or due south. And what is so wonderful is that it will do exactly the same thing even in the situation where the aircraft was nose in to the pilot. So the pilot doesn't have to think about the differences between nose in and nose out. Backstick will bring it back. Let's take the situation where you've flown the aircraft out a long, long way away from yourself and now you're having trouble working out which way it's facing and you want to get it back painlessly. Yep, hit the IOC button and apply aft cyclic and with a little nursing by you of the throttle to control the height, it'll come straight back to you. Give or take a few degrees. Now, here comes the hard question. What if the aircraft, instead of facing away from you, was facing towards you when you hit the IOC button? Well, this is the wonderful bit. It does exactly the same. You apply aft cyclic and it comes cruising back on that line just the way it did before. Isn't that great? Yes, it is. Congratulations, Walkira. I love it. But now, also very badly explained, but absolutely vital. When you go to the flying field, do you think about which way the model was facing when you put the battery in it? You probably don't, or you haven't in the past, but now you've got to take that very seriously. You need to think of this picture as being aligned with north at the top of the page. When the battery was connected to this Walkira, the flight controller gained the clear impression that it was going to fly forward from that point. And that's a very significant detail because if the aircraft finds itself southwards of that point when you hit the IOC command, you will find that the control has become reversed. While the aircraft is flying north of the point where you calibrated it, when you apply backstick, it will come backwards. When you apply right cyclic, it will track right. When you apply left cyclic, it will track left. And that will happen whether it's nose in or nose out, but it will be reversed if when you hit the IOC switch, it was south of the point of calibration. Three little brain teasers for you. In each of these pictures, the three aircraft have taken off in the same direction and to the north. Now we find that two of them are south of their calibration point and one of them is in a rather ambiguous position. How many of these aircraft do you think can safely be controlled back to a safe landing through IOC? 
answer not really any of them. The one on the right just might make it, but I rather doubt it. If it's a really desperate situation, I think it's returned to home time for all three aircraft. And how do you feel about these three? Yep, they're all three north of the calibration point. They'll all be fine. IOC is an easy way of handling that little crisis. I'm sure you're going well, but for the perfect score, what's going to happen as an outcome of this group of three? The one on the left, what do you reckon? The one in the middle? And the one on the right? Yep, well, I'm worried about the one on the right. I hope you were. I might have given the false impression that return to home is the best second option. I don't really think that at all. The best second option, assuming that the ground that you're flying from is fairly clear, is to take the aircraft up to 50 feet, put it into hover hold, and then walk until you are very close to it and can see clearly which way it is facing, then to release the hover hold and fly it home from there, or fly it to a touchdown near you. That would be my preferred situation almost every time. But today is IOC day and let's take two simulated rescues. Here you see the incredibly lucky situation where the gallant pilot has put himself into the perfect position, lost control, presses the IOC button and aft sight click and looky looky, here it comes straight down his throat more or less. However, we'll take the opportunity to exercise a little forward cyclic and watch it go yes forward cyclic out to the danger zone once more here we go right cyclic across the wild blue yonder and now aft cyclic and if you can't make a safe landing from there you'll never get a job with me so I've introduced you to binding and fixed ID I've shown you a way out of some of the problems involved in hover hold and I've got that totally sorted myself. I'm confident it will work for you. And now I've introduced you to intelligent orientation control and I think you'll get that to work just beautifully. When, you might be wondering, is this nice guy going to tell us all about return to home? The answer is, I'm not. I have accidentally hit that return to home button three times since I started playing around with my wall cura, and I'm here to tell you, it works. But I am not deliberately going to put myself in a situation where we get any dramatic videos of the event. But my word of advice for those who are really keen to try return to home, do it after the battery has only been in use for three or four minutes. After six minutes, I don't think I'd be bothering with the return to home control, but then I wouldn't have put myself into the danger that needs the return to home at six minutes. It's good advice.